about that time. Welcome to episode 74 of Smarky Marks, a show about wrestling for the people. My name is Steve, and with me as always... Justin. And we're talking about the Wacky World of Wrestling for the week of August 13th, 2018. Can you feel it? Yes, sir. Um, unfortunately, the trend over this past weekend has continued um, yeah. for the past couple months. Um, some wrestlers um, mm-hmm. have unfortunately lost their lives. Um, either at their own hand or, uh, nature's. Um, yeah. and that trend continued over the weekend. Yeah. Uh, before we get to Anvil, mm. um, we got to stop off and talk about quickly, uh, Brian Danovic. Mm-hmm. Um, a tough enough competitor. Yes. Uh, never really got a shot because I believe while he was in tough enough, mm-hmm. Fortunately, suffered an injury. Yeah, he did. I think and, I, uh, I think I actually watched the season. He did. He did just sort of get to like a. Because this is like this is one of like, like back in the day. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like 2004. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think he wrestled a bit after. Um, again, not too familiar with the band's work. Mm-hmm. Um, I know he did a lot of work with Brian Zane, who's yes. a YouTuber. Yeah. And he did a lot of work on his YouTube, and you know Brian Zane had some nice words to say over the weekend about him. So mm-hmm. just wanted to quickly mention him again. Not too familiar with his work. No. When somebody passed away, you have to at least. You have to mention acknowledge it. Acknowledge you know, the man or woman in this case, was, mm-hmm. uh, Brian Danovic. Um, mm-hmm. Thoughts are with his family. But, of course, the um, the news of Jim and the Anvil Nightheart uh, passing away, I believe it was... Was it, it was Sunday or Monday? Uh, Monday. Monday. Yeah. Um, so it was like Monday in the day. Mm. If you woke up and you read the news... Yeah. You would have saw it uh, plastered all over all the sheets and on what WWE's website. Yeah. Um, I believe he was in his home. Mm-hmm. He suffered a fall. Um, yeah. Went supposedly, into some sort of convulsion. Um, yeah. Supposedly type. he kind of like he he got up because he was having trouble sleeping. He got up to adjust the thermostat or something like that, and then apparently, uh, according to his wife, he sort of like like he had like this weird. Um, she sort of said, like, he twisted in a weird way and then fell and then hit his, like, his face off of the wall, fell to the ground, and that's pretty much what killed him. Um, yeah. Uh, they were saying, like, a lot of things about convulsions and stuff like that. Nobody knows for sure exactly what it was. I'm um, sure we'll know in a few weeks when they yeah, the, do the autopsy. The autopsy um, but yeah, yeah. Uh, obviously one half of one of the... Best tag teams of all time, the Hart mm-hmm. Foundation, a member of the Hart Foundation stable when yes. it grew. Mm-hmm. Um, like the video said on Raw last night, known yeah. for his goatee and his signature laugh. That and I completely forgot about it when they played that laugh. I just I was that hit me real hard. I'd completely forgot for some unknown reason, or I just didn't think of it. But yeah, once I heard that laugh, it just like hit me right in the heart. In that one being a proponent of. The other half of most famous tag teams, you mm. were a, mm-hmm. I you was, were probably I was, a bigger Anvil fan I, than most. I, I was, yeah, no, I've uh, I've always been kind of sporting the flag for Anvil, who I always said was you know very much an underrated worker for what he was. Um, great big man, um, yeah. He's I, but you know as I as I point, posted on Twitter, I was like this was this was a name that was synonymous with wrestling in my childhood. You know what I mean? Like Anvil. I was a huge Hart Foundation fan, as you should be, um, and, you know, even though when they split up, Brett clearly had the better career, um, but I always followed Anvil when, even, you know, like, new Hart Foundation with Owen, shit like that, you know, I always followed him, I always thought he was a really, really damn good worker for, you know, the for, for a big man, like, a very, very solid big man, good worker, and everything like that, and I just, you know, again, as a, as a kid, like, he was a big, big name for me, so this kind of, this one hits home. Um, so, yeah, uh, this obviously, rough news. Obviously, Brett had a lot to say, mm-hmm. um, everyone in WWE had a lot to say, mm-hmm. um, obviously Natalia was not at Raw last night, um, Clearly. but it was nice to see everyone showing support for her and expressing their love for her and how cool her dad was, mm-hmm. you know. So it was good to see that, like, it was kind of just a big love fest. Yeah. Try to, like, let's all come together. Well, that's the thing. I mean, you know, the, the, the happy, you know, laughing guy that he was on camera apparently is exactly who he was off camera, so. Which is what you like to hear. Yeah, that's what you always want to hear, you know what I mean? So that's just, 
you know, it's 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 a shame because apparently he was he was one of the good ones. You know what I mean? So you kind of you kind of hate hearing shit like that. And again, really hard if you if you remember him like I do. If you're you know if you're anywhere near my age of thirty five, thirty six, like you'll definitely he was definitely a huge part of your wrestling childhood. So it's kind of. It sucks. It really does suck. So uh, grab your Bret Hart DVDs. Mm-hmm. Look on YouTube. Absolutely. You will find a bunch I, of Hart Foundation matches on there. I highly recommend a match with the Rockers. Uh, probably my favorite Anvil moment I ever had, which was, um, I think it was Sean, because uh, it was the Hart Foundation was the Rockers, and then uh, he he whipped Sean into the ropes. And... Uh, Oh no, it was the other way around. Sorry, he whipped Sean whipped Anvil into the ropes, and he was gonna try and do a power slam on him. And Anvil's facing the camera just as Sean's attempting to pick him up, and nothing happens. And Anvil just looks at the camera, and just goes. Nah. <laughs> and it's like okay, that's one of the one of the best moments ever. So uh, yeah, I highly recommend that. But watch any of them. I mean, it just again great, fantastic one work. of the great tag teams. Um, mm-hmm. Unfortunately, I saw the mm. like the saddest picture ever mm. of yeah, like I saw that the too. Heart Foundation in the, the ring. Yeah, the Canada hating Heart Foundation, the expanded version, and only Brett is in color yeah, because everyone, everyone else, else in that gone. picture has passed away. And you're like, oh, yeah, that was that was rough. Uh, so rough mind. reminder of how uh, hard the wrestling business hard can the be. wrestling business can be. Because so, yeah, yeah, none of them. I mean, I guess Anvil was the closest to going of natural causes, but. The other, the other three, not so much. So yeah. This so. is, you know, this is God, man. And the Heart Foundation was so fucking good. Man. Yeah. It's hard, hard to think about. So thoughts are with the Heart family, absolutely, and, uh, the Night Heart family, and all mm-hmm. that. Um, now we're gonna try to. Uh, Let's make with the yucks now. You know, try ha, to ha, ha, as ha. we uh, awkwardly transition, like we have been the last couple weeks. Yeah. Um, CM Punk. Yeah. Thought he was out of the. Uh, Hot water of being sued. And just when they think you're up, somebody pull you right back by, in. Uh, by winning his case against mm-hmm. Chris Amon. And I do say his case against Chris Amon, Dr. Chris Amon, not the WWE. Mm-hmm. Let's all not try to have revisionist history and say the WWE sued CM Punk. Well, as we said when the, the verdict came down, I'm not quite sure even Vince is aware of the lawsuit. So... You know, because as, as I'm finding out more and more, and I do highly recommend if you ever want to listen, find out some weird-ass stories, listen to uh, the the something to wrestle with. Because it, it turns out our impression of Vince McMahon being a crazy person who doesn't see pretty much beyond his own reach, it's kind of true. Yeah, so, so... Good to know. He thought he was out, he thought he was free, he was yeah. going to do may make uh, little independent movies and mm. just live his life. <clears throat> and then Colt Cabana came in. Yep. And the story broke over the weekend that Colt Cabana mm. is now a uh, CM Punk's partner in that lawsuit, being also sued by Chris Amon, Dr. Chris Amon, mm-hmm. um, has now ta- is now going to take CM Punk to court mm-hmm. for damages. Yeah. Um, damages that, according to Colt, again, mm-hmm. this is all hearsay, he has text to prove it, apparently. I mean, I'm more willing to believe Colt Cabana than CM Punk, um, but whatever. Yeah, um... We'll get to that in a minute. That... During the trial, of course, CM Punk being CM Punk, many years in the WWE, couple fights into the UFC, he has money. Let's he's a millionaire, say, right? You know, millionaire probably a couple times over. You know, like, he's got, on the podcast that yeah. he was being sued for, he said, what did he say, he had like $20 million in the bank, so he doesn't care about money? Well, then. And that was well before any UFC business, where he's yeah. made a lot more since then. Um... So he could afford all these legal bills, and it would be nothing to just just just, you know, just just throw it, you know, throw some money at it. Hey, you know how Cole Cabana is your best friend? Just throw him a couple ducats because the man still works on the Indies. Probably doesn't have a million dollars to pay in legal fil- legal fees. And as Cole Cabana pointed out, like Punk said, he would said, "Pay what you can. I got the rest. Yeah. I'm the millionaire. I'm your buddy. I got you, man." Turns out, no. Not so much. Uh, but I think about halfway through the trial, again, this is all hearsay, you know, what the sheets are saying, mm-hmm. that Punk changed his mind, uh, you know, Colt's on his own for whatever expenses he had to incur, and mm-hmm. he wanted to leave and get new counsel, and then CM Punk's counsel said, don't do that. It's a it's big a, headache. It's a whole bunch of shit. And now, at the end of it, WWE, I mean, WWE isn't involved in it. Mm-mm. But if you ask Uncle Dave, mm-hmm. 
And take that with a grain of salt sometimes. You know? Um, This is what WWE wanted. That's what he says. I mean, I don't believe that just because I don't think WWE as a whole gave a shit. That's honestly my thought process on and this it's whole like thing. If, it's, if you want to believe that, you know, I have a lovely time here in Florida I want to talk to you about. <laughs> yeah, because, exactly. Like, like, I think now, officially, through this Cole Cabana story, yeah. that's... That news source mm-hmm. has to be considered biased, right? When he you're when you're I when mean, you're coming yeah. up with things like that's conspiracy theory at best. Yeah, like and and presenting it as fact, which is again, are there people within the company that are probably happy to oh, see that? Oh, sure. Yeah, because they're happy to see CM Punk in misery. Yeah, because, anyone who was as a, Corey yeah. Graves pointed out, uh-huh. he's a scumbag. Yeah, like he I changed, you, man. He used to be cool. I guarantee you, uh, Corey Graves uh, sent an email over to Cole Cabana being like, "Hey, man." Walking my side of the yeah. fucking fence. Doesn't like, it suck? The actual monolith that is the WWE mm-hmm. doesn't care. No. They have SummerSlam coming up. They got shit on the go. I mean, shit. They got WrestleMania in April to worry about. They're not worried about whether CM Punk and Colt Cabana are friends. That is insane for Uncle Dave to even put that anywhere. And the fact that people are actually taking that seriously makes me go, are you fucking kidding me. Well, no, I can see why people believe it. It's the same people who don't like WWE to begin with. I guess, but that's still so... it just so... gives them a reason to hate them, right? But that's still so insane. Just like this is a reason to, to hate CM Punk, you know? Like, I mean, I had a reason before, but, I mean, now I got another reason, because it's just you like... Know? But it's weird, because, like, it's the Civil War has begun. Um, the indie fans are completely divided, which... Well, this is how you do it. ...is amazing. Uh, yeah. CM Punk, at the end of this month, right before All In, mm-hmm. is scheduled in Chicago to do a signing at Pro Wrestling Tees Brick and Mortar Store. Yeah. What happens? I, I mean, nothing. Nothing happens. You know, uh, I don't know, because, uh, apparently there was a progress show, and... Mm-hmm. In Chicago, and so I think somebody chanted CM Punk, and people started booing, saying, Call Cabana. So, like, I don't know. But... Again, that's the Civil over, War. Over the next, over the course of this month, yeah. as details come out and the lawsuit gears up, if the if the lawsuit ever happens, because sometimes I, sometimes there's just a settlement, say settlement and, and like on. Punk yeah. just gives them money and we all that's probably going to be. Day. In all fairness, that's probably there will what's be no happen. lawsuit. I don't think. No, like, I can't. Punk imagine. will probably just go yeah. here's some money, yeah. shut up and go away, mm-hmm. and then they never talk to each mm-hmm. other again. But like so. the fact is, like this is just another person coming out going, yeah, this guy's kind of a scumbag. Which, you know, I mean, at this point, is that shocking? Like... Nothing wrong oh, with look, being a dick. No, I mean, if like, that's you what you know, are, that's I'm what you gonna, are. I'm not gonna crucify CM Punk on it, you know, for being a dick, but, like, let's all pretend... Yeah. Like, he's this holier-than-thou... He's not. ...martyr that... He's an asshole. Um, that, like, everyone cheers for at these events. Yeah. It's like... Well, I get why they cheer for him, because now it's not even about CM Punk. He yeah. needs to become a symbol yeah. of, like, whenever the crowd's disinterested, they just chant his name. Yeah, it's it's Like, become... I don't know where why boring was. I, I don't know. And apparently, you're boring is not can, cool. You can, you can yell boring, it's yeah, fine. But apparently CM Punk is the way. Which is weird, because if you think about it, Vince would probably react more to boring than he would CM Punk at this point. He probably just goes, whatever. But if you chant boring, he might actually pay attention. So it just yeah. seems like an odd thing to do. But anyway, that's kind of not the point. But yeah, CM Punk is a symbol for everything "quote unquote" wrong with WWE, which makes no sense to me because it's you know there's uh, CM Punk was never screwed by WWE aside from what he claims, which you know as as more and more of his bullshit comes out, I'm believing less and less of it. Not that I believed all of it anyway. So. It just seems a little strange to me that everyone's just like, see what they did to CM Punk. I'm like, yeah, give them a record-breaking title run. Yeah, they're horrible assholes, that one. Yeah. I don't so, know. So, unfortunately, yeah. that saga will continue and will It will, give you and, and, you know, and I know we, we get them. As, as I just, you know, as we kind of use it to, to bury Punk, poor fucking Cole Cabana, you know what I mean? Like, that's not... Like, you get involved in this because your buddy says, I got you, and then immediately turns around and it's like, yeah, no, fuck you. Like, that Yeah, because part, part of the deal was, like, he was texted. Yeah. Like, Cole Cabana was...